a new, new concept. We're going to talk about random variables. Well, the name doesn't give much of a hint. This field has a lot of bad terminology, and this is part of it, because the name doesn't really tell you very much. Well, so a definition. Uh, say we have some experiment, and there's some sample space, some set of possible outcomes. A random variable is. Well, we want to say exactly what we mean here. It's a function, well, we've, of a s certain s sort. Um, talking about functions ever since uh, math 3A. Function, call it x. Okay. That's a capital X. In fact, sometimes I'll, I'll write it in such a way as to make clear that I, I mean a capital X. Assigning a number, some real number, to each outcome. Well, and that's all. Uh, in symbols, Yeah, to say that it's a function from the sample space, it's often written with a colon and an arrow like this, but that just means what the definition says, that it's a function and its domain. It's the sample space. It's assigning numbers to things in the sample space. And its range is some subset of the real numbers. But it will help a lot if we look at some examples. Here are five examples. Say the experiment consists of rolling two dice, say fair dice, a red one and a blue one. And so the outcome, well, we'll have some face showing on the red die and some face showing on the blue die. For a random variable, we could just take the sum of the those two faces. So what could that be? In other words, what's the range of x? Well, the smallest the sum could be is 2. And the largest it can be is 12. And we could, might ask, what's the probability that the sum is 5? OK, well, that's the sort of problem we already know how to do. It's just being restated in new terminology. We're interested in a certain event, and we want its probability. The event consists of all the outcomes which this random variable takes on the value 5. Our usual picture of the sample space sh shows the 36 possible outcomes. What the red die might have and what the 
blue that I might have. And here we're looking at a certain event, all the outcomes for which the sum is 5. Well, we can color those in. Uh, it might be a 1 and a 4, or a 2 and a 3, or a 3 and a 2, or 4 and a 1. There are four of these outcomes that give us a 5. And these are fair dice. So the outcomes are equally likely, and there's 36 of them. The probability that we get one of those four is one ninth. Well, but let's look at a different uh, example. Say the experiment involves choosing a person from a population. and determining the person's weight in kilograms. Call this random variable w instead of x for weight. And the probability that, say, w is less than or equal to 80 means the probability that the person chosen has a weight no more than 80 kilograms. It's a function that assigns a, a real number to each outcome. Or a different sort of thing. I mean, here we can't actually calculate any probabilities without knowing something about, about the population. Suppose we flip a, a coin. This is not a fair coin. This is an unfair coin. In each flip, the probability of heads is two-thirds for each flip, independent of what happens in the other flips. And you do this until it comes up tails, and then you stop. Well, that's the experiment. Where's the, for a random variable, we'll take, and again, I'm going to call this W, but this time it stands for the waiting time, that kind of wait. Simply the number of flips. Well, what sort of values could that take on? Over here, we had a random variable whose range, whose set of possible values, consisted of these 11 integers. Right? There are 11 of them, right? Over here, well, one difference is that the range is infinite. I mean, the number of flips could be as small as one. It's one if you get tails immediately on the first flip. Range, okay, abbreviated R-A-N. <coughs> it, it, uh, it, 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 
there and there is also range. Um, or it could be 17. Um, perhaps it's the first 16 flips all come up heads, and it might take 17 flips to get a tail. Okay, but it's, it would be one if, if the fl first flip comes up tails. Then it only takes one flip. Yeah, but it's not a fair coin. It may take a long time. A different sort of thing we somehow manage to focus our attention on a particular atom of this radioactive substance so like a radium atom and radium atoms will decay, the decay products, sooner or later. Yeah, but there's a waiting time involved. We've used the letter W already, so let's use this, call this random variable T for time. For the waiting time in hours until this atom decays. Well, depending on the half life, uh, it could be a very long time or a very short time. There's a way to talk about the probability that this time lies in a certain interval. And I'll just write this down, but later when we come to section 12.5, we'll have to talk about why this is true. We could ask for the probability that the waiting time is between two hours and nine hours. Well, this is an event, the set of outcomes where the waiting time till decay is at least two hours, but no more than nine hours. And this is given by an integral. Our first hint that Calculus might have something to do with probabilities. Uh, where k here is a certain constant, k is quite large if the half life is extremely short, k is small for a long half life, something that's not all that radioactive. And uh, it, it's a random variable. It's assigning a number to each outcome, namely just the number of hours we had to wait for the thing to decay. Last example. Going back to that unfair coin, same one. Probability of heads is two thirds on each flip, independent of the other flips. I mean, we expect independence because a coin has no memory, 
uh, what it doesn't know what happened in previous flips. But instead of flipping it on and on, waiting for something to happen, we just flip it three times. And a random variable we might choose to look at is the number of tails we get. So what is the range of this random variable? That is, what values could it take on? Well. the smallest it could be, would be 0. Maybe, we, maybe all three flips come up heads. Or we could get one tail, or two, or three. Well, so it turns out that the range has size 4. There are four possible values for this random variable. And it's, a, it's an example of a random variable. It's assigning numbers to the outcomes. Well, let's calculate the probabilities. That go along with these possible values the, the random variable can take. That is, what's the probability that it's 0? or 1, or 2, or 3. So these equations define events. Uh, in the first case, we're looking at the probability of the event consisting of outcomes for which x is 0. That means all three flips came up heads. Well, this is perhaps not as unlikely as it might seem, because uh, it's an unfair coin. It's biased towards heads. And the probability on the first flip is 2 thirds, and second and third. And the flips are independent. We just multiply these together. 827s, the probability that, uh, that the random variable has the value the value 0. And, for, and now we want to do the other possible values. <laughs> Probability for the event x equals 1. Well, we look at this, that event, the set of all outcomes for which we have one tail, two heads, but it could be in any order. I mean, that is, it could be the first flip that came up tails, or perhaps the second one, or perhaps the third one. But these, of the eight possible outcomes, there are these three for which the random variable has the value 1. And what's the probability of this event? Well, it's not a fair coin, so we can't just count. The outcomes are not equally likely. But the probability of this first outcome, tails, heads, heads, One third times two thirds times two thirds. Right. One third for tails, and then the heads, and then heads. And the flips are independent, so we just multiply these out. And the probability of heads, tails, heads would be exactly the same, because multiplication is commutative. Right? It's two thirds times one third times two thirds. But of course, that 
that's the same number, 4 27ths, and we get another 4 27ths here. Uh, so altogether we have what, 12 27ths. Well, probability of getting that the random variable comes up with the value 2 is very similar. There's three outcomes. Namely, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, and heads, tails, tails. Uh, but the probability is going to be 6 27ths, and the probability that uh, the random variable gives the value 3, well, that's the smallest of these. That's only 1 27th. Now, In effect here, we're calculating the values of a certain function here. And let's draw the graph of this function. The function whose value at 0 is 8 27 Its value at 1 was 12 27 well, its graph is not going to be a nice curve. It's going to consist of four discrete points. Okay, so let's, but let's plot those four points. When uh, we have the point in the plane here, 1, 12, 27, uh, 2, it's smaller than that, 3, okay. The graph consists of these, just of these four points. It's not a smooth curve. If we add these numbers up, Well, let's try it. Twenty-seven twenty-sevenths. Of course, they have to add up to one. We have the entire range of the random variable here, all the possible values it can take. So the these probabilities cover the certain event. They cover all the cases. Now, this sort of function is going to come up in other cases as well. Give it a name. The probability mass function. Uh, perhaps not the, the perfect name, but it's the one people use. So Q is, is assigning numbers to <coughs> things in the range of X. It's assigning probabilities to things in the range. Um, 
So those probabilities will be somewhere between 0 and 1. It's assigning non-negative numbers to the things in the range. They've got to add up to 1. Well, prob this is one of the things we want to introduce in the way of terminology here. And here are some more. We want to cover the following five concepts. Each having to do with a random variable. There's probability mass function. Which answers the question, what's the probability that the random variable takes on a certain value? And it's the function that tells us what that probabi probability is for each of the possible values the function could have. Cumulative distribution function which answers the question, what's the probability that we get a value less than or equal to some number? Uh, the mean, or also known as the expected value, which answers the question, what average value do we expect in the long run? If we ex repeat the experiment over and over, each time we run the experiment, we get some outcome. and. The random variable assigns a number to that outcome. What average value of that number do we expect? <coughs> well, so this is setting ourselves some goals. Uh, that we'll also talk about the variance of the random variable and the standard deviation. Um, which deal with the question, uh, when we run the experiment, uh, yeah, how might uh, the value of x differ from its mean? Well, one at a time. Probability mass function. We've already talked about, at least in this example, in general, it's Let's write this down. In general, for uh, for a random variable, Its probability mass function, call it Q, and it's defined by the following equation.
that the uh, for any number, call it t, that's in the range of this random variable. This is the function that's giving us the probability that the random variable actually takes that value. So here we had a random variable whose range had size 4. We could calculate all of the numbers. If the range is infinite, uh, we'll hope to be, deal with it in some other way. What about the cumulative distribution function? Well, call that F, capital F, defined by the following equation. The probability of the event X is no more than T. Where T here can be any real number. It could be 8.7. F of 8.7 would be the probability that we get it. a measurement from this random variable that's no more than 8.7. Going back to example 5 here, Let's draw a graph of the cumulative distribution function. Well, it does not consist of four isolated points. The graph of the probability mass function consisted of those four isolated points. We're flipping that unfair coin three times. The random variable was the number of tails. Of this biased coin. Well, what would f of minus 3 be? Not very interesting. f of minus 3 would be 0. <clears throat> the number of tails can only be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. It can't be negative. But f of 0, ah, that's the probability that we get a number of tails less than or equal to 0. Well, the only way it can be less than or equal to 0 is for it to be equal to 0. Because the number is only 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. And the probability that it's 0 is 8 27ths. The point 0, 8 27ths lies on our graph. And then nothing happens for a while. That is, we get a straight horizontal line here. Why? Because the probability 
x is less than or equal to 0 0.7. In this example, would still be that 8 27th. Because x can only be a whole number here. It's the number of tails. It's either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. But when we get up to 1, the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to 1 is what? The prob Let's write some of this down. It can be less than or equal to 1 in two ways. It could be 0 or 1. And those don't overlap. So it's 8 27ths plus 12 27 So we can plot that point on our graph. And then nothing happens for a while until we get out to 2. The probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is the probability that it's 0 or 1 or 2. So that's going to be 26 27. And finally, the probability that it's less than or equal to 3 is simply 1. And the probability that it's less than or equal to 10 is going to be exactly the same. The only way it can be less than or equal to 10 is what? It can be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, and that covers everything. Some properties of the cumulative distribution function, well, it's non-decreasing. Sometimes it's constant for an interval, but it can't go down, right? Because, <clears throat> because events have positive probability. Uh, probability of being less than or equal to 3 couldn't be more than the probability of being less than or equal to 7, some larger event. And the function goes from 0 to 1. Or perhaps a better way to say it, it's a non-decreasing function and its values are always in the closed interval from 0 to 1. But how many tails do we expect in, out of these three flips? Well, let's calculate. The average number of, uh, of tails, taking into account the fact that it's not a fair coin. It's biased towards heads. <coughs> so continuing with example five,
we want to look at the question, what va average value for x? Uh, do we expect? Well, the possible values are those same four numbers, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Yeah, but there's different probabilities that we've calculated for each of these. We're going to take a weighted average. Possible values of x, well, as we keep saying, is 0, 1, or 2, or 3. But we'll weight each of these numbers with the probability of getting that number. We'll get a 0 with probability 8 27 We'll get 1. Well, we figure in the long run we should get a 1 about 12 27ths of the time. That fraction reduces, but uh, to keep a common denominator, let's not reduce it. We'll get a 2 6 27ths of the time. So we'll use that as our weight for 2, and uh, 3 happens only 1 27th of the time. So we'll calculate this weighted average. That first number just gives us 0. Twenty-seven twenty-sevens. And what this means is if we do this experiment over and over, In the long run, we expect about the number of tails to be about 1. Let's say that better. We expect the average. value to be about 1. And if we did it for the number of heads, well, that's a different random variable. Call it y. I'll write it like this to so clarify that it's, it's a capital Y. If, what if that's the number of heads instead of the number of tails? Its expected value If we repeat the experiment a lot of times, what do we expect for the average of y? Well, we could do the same sort of weighted average. The number of heads can only be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3. So we can do the same sort of weighted average. The probability of getting 0 heads is the same as getting uh, getting three tails. So we know these probabilities. It's 1 27th there. Probability of getting one head, that's the same as getting two tails, 6 27th, 12 27th, uh, 8 27th. Well, let's add them up. 0 and 6 and 24 and tw and 
24, and it's 48 and 6, 54 over 27. Ah. 2, which makes some sense. T heads are twice as likely than as tails for this coin. Probability of heads in each flip is two-thirds. Probability of tails is only one-third. In repetitions, if we ex repeat the experiment a lot of times, we expect the number of heads to average out around two. But let's try to formulate this as a general concept for other problems, not just example five. In general, for a random variable, we want to define its expected value, also known as, as the mean. For a random variable x, Well, we'll have to look at its range, the set of possible values. And so we had in our example just the set 0, 1, 2, 3. But we want to be more general. Say we have range consisting of those numbers. Then we define the mean or the expected value to be a certain weighted average. We take all of these possible numbers and weight them with the probabilities given by the probability mass function. So let me write that down. This is called the mean or its expected value. And there's, if we're calling it the mean, our favorite symbol for it is the letter mu. This is a lowercase Greek mu. And if we're calling it expected value, it's usually written like this with a capital E for expected value. But here's what we mean. It's the weighted average. We take all the possible values the random variable could have. Well, they're simply the values out of the range of this random variable. But each one has to be weighted with the right probability. T1 is weighted with the probability that the random variable is T1, and so forth. We could write this in, one, in a more compact form. We take the possible values but weighted. Well, for the one of our examples where we're waiting for the number of flips, we had a random variable with an infinite range. It's conceivable that this will be an infinite sum, and we'll have to calculate to see whether it converges or not. And next time, we should talk about the variance and the standard deviation. Got to stop for today.